Hey everyone, welcome back to another 31 Minute Podcast. Solo time this time. Uh, I've got a question that I think, I was going to answer it on video, but I think it's too long to, to do a video on. And it's, I think it's a really good question. It's probably one of the most, uh, the hardest questions I've ever been asked to answer in regard to change. So I might just read it and I'm going to put my glasses on this one, Jack. <laughs> So toxic boss, hey Matt, I wanted to ask for your advice on how to deal with the current situation I'm having. I've been basically mirroring the way you live and seeing amazing results. Thank you. He says thank you, not me. But it's attracting a lot of hate, jealousy from my work colleagues, but mainly my boss. My boss is taking S-H-I-T, talking, crap, behind my back and just doesn't like me. And my other workmates are also feeding into it. We are all similar age. This is making me feel in a state of fear and insecurity and actually making me start to doubt, which is obviously low on the emotional guidance scale. I feel like I've lost all momentum and can't stop thinking about not being liked and can't get into the zone at all. Basically just operating in a really low vibration, which is affecting all my habits. I would love to know how you would deal with this situation. Should I sit my boss down and have an open and honest conversation? Or is it time to leave the workplace? I really love my job. Thanks so much, Matt. What a great question, Jackson. Excellent. Excellent. You don't have a microphone today. Uh, Let's sort of break this thing down because I, I understand this completely. I really do. And so first thing, you go to the top part where he says that he started to mirror the changes that I've made in life and he's loving it. And I think he says his results are, his name's Lou, by the way. I think he says his results, yeah, seeing amazing results. So that that's great. And I think life is about constant change. Nothing ever stays the same and nothing lasts forever. So you changing is a really good thing. But here's something funny that happens when you change. Your environment changes as well. So you're... Because everything's got to change to match your frequency. All that's happening is why you're seeing great results in your life is your frequency is changing, nothing else. So that's where you're going right now. And every, like this morning, I did breathing, ice bath, um, red light bed, usual pod routine. You know, that's my morning routine. I love it. It makes me feel great. It helps me get, step into the day in a high vibrational state. I didn't do cardio today um, because I just didn't feel like the time allowed. Tara got up, we've got a newborn. Things like that. So I like to stay in a rhythm. And you've got to remember, everybody has their own vibrational signature. It's, that's where they're at, at this point in time now. And a lot of people don't work on that. It, it just, they're just living by default. So like if they have a good day, it just happens like that. If they have a not so good day, it just happens like that. And they don't do much about it. And they have their own habits, which creates the vibrational set point in their life they're used to thinking a certain way. They're used to speaking a certain way. They're used to operating in a certain way. And that's the reflection of their life. So when you step out and start changing yourself, it does make them think about themselves also. You know, I get, I, when I started bodybuilding again, started taking testosterone, started doing all this sort of stuff, I had people ringing me saying, we want the old map back. We like the old map better. That's, and they were serious, like they were, you know, I had lots of people saying all sorts of stuff. You're changing, you're this. Even my friends, a group of friends, I think there were about five of them, started a messaging group to make fun of me. They would send pictures, of, you know, to each other. They would talk behind my back. I found this out a lot later. But that's the way people sort of make themselves feel better. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much about that, but it's easy to say you're in it. I've been through two divorces 
One time, my friend went to a restaurant. This is in my first divorce. Went to a re- and you know I, I have a reasonable public profile around here. Like lots of people know me, and lots of people, you know, have their opinions and things like this. Some like me, some don't know me. Some think I'm up myself. Some think I'm really nice. Some all sorts of things. And Jackson's mum, when I got divorced from him, like I thought long and hard about it because I had four four babies. And it was very difficult, but I was looking forward in my life and I'm thinking, and I looked at her parents and I looked at her and I was like, you know, I got myself into this situation and I just didn't want that future. I just didn't. I just, I knew how I would end up. You know, like her parents were a reflection, Jackson's then a pop, of what I didn't want in life. And I could see our relationship actually going in that direction and pretty fast. So I made, I didn't want to leave Jackson or Paris or Phoenix or Logan, none of them. I didn't want to leave them. I was like, this is a little family. I'd never really had a family like that. And it was, I was like, it was such a huge thing for me. The amount of pain I went through to readjust and I was only young and had a young company and it was like such a huge thing. And my friend was at dinner one night and he rang me and said, there's a table of 20 people talking behind us saying how you've abandoned your kids and you've done this, just walked away. You know, and it didn't matter what I did. Like, I've never, I've never missed a beat financially supporting either, either group of my kids. So I've got four with Jackson's mum and two with Shelley and I have one with Tara. And I've always been the best provider I could physically be. Isn't that right, Jackson? Yeah. I'll, I'll get a testimonial here. <laughs> you don't have a mic- microphone, do you? No, okay. Hello. Hello. Yeah, go yeah. on. I've always been a reasonable provider. Well, even when I didn't have stuff, I always made sure you guys had what you needed. Yeah, you, you definitely, um, when we needed stuff, you sorted that out. It's like, but I, I think I understood you were working and like a lot of us kind of understand what you're trying to, don't, uh, well, we do understand what you, tr- like we're trying to build. Yeah. And But when you were little, you didn't. No. But I still used to come over, take your riding down in the cul-de-sac every... I was thinking about that the other day. Yeah. I used to read you a story every night. Yeah. Yeah. I used to go to your mum's, read a story, do the... Remember the witch? Yeah, the witch. The witch. Ah, the switch. And Logan used to say, ah, switch, switch. Yeah. It was like a broomstick one too. Yeah. I used to put you on my arm and fly you all around one on one. Yeah. One one at a time. But, you know, I did my best. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did my best. And... um. But I just didn't want... Thanks, Jason. That's all right. I, I just didn't want... Um, you know, I, I didn't want to sidestep any responsibility that I had, but I just didn't want that future. So that was a big change for me. And I remember one day my phone stopped ringing um, pretty much and in the middle of the divorce. And it, you know, did, I didn't fight with either of my ex-wives. I you know, gave them everything I had and you know, always paid everything I could and, and then you know, tried to be as amicable and as good as I could be um so we never went through courts or anything like that but I remember my phone stopped ringing and I was I rang a friend in Melbourne a really good agent down there James Tustavan and I said is your phone still <laughs> oh that's what I said I think I said when you got divorced did your phone stop ringing and he's like oh no, not really and I was like shivers mine has so it did have a ripple effect for sure. And then the next divorce, I mean, probably that was pretty major too. It was two years of real wobbliness everywhere and regrouping. And then now my life is the best it's ever been. But I had to go through all of that. But what I saw was um, change. When you change, th- there's an adjustment around you too. And then but you've got to stay consistent. And what happens is people get used to that. So should you sit your boss down? Well, I'm a bit of a straight shooter. I'd say things if it's on my mind. I tell the people. I say, look, I don't feel that you're being a great boss. I feel like you're, you know, I want to work here. I love working here. I'm a great asset. I work really hard. I do all that stuff. Yes, I've changed my habits. Like your habits are nothing to do with them. But you've got to remember you're reflecting something back to them. Like you're making them think about themselves. So they might, you know, when I go to places, sometimes people see that, you know, I work out and they go, Oh, they go, oh, gee, you, you look like you work out a lot. And I say, yeah, I'm, yeah, a bit. And they're like, oh, yeah, a bit. And they go, oh, well, I need to start working out again, you know. And they start going on their own rant for no reason. I don't ask them. They just start going on that. So you make them think about themselves. 
So their insecurities are nothing more than, you know, potentially looking at you thinking, oh, gee, I, I should be doing more with myself. And that's why people make fun of you a lot of the time. But one thing also on top of that is people, things pass. Things definitely pass. And you've just got to stay as consistent as you can and show them that you're getting happier. And don't do it for them. Do it for you. But they'll see that you're getting happier and happier and happier. Hopefully your results are matching that as well. And then it'll steady itself. And then, you know, funny enough, they'll... Like they'll probably start doing what you're doing a lot of the time. You know, Jackson used to make, not make fun of me, but he'd be like, oh, you know, you're in the ice bath and this and that. We're talking about yesterday, the sauna. And Jackson's like, oh, I might start doing saunas in the night because it's good for him. But you've got to let people find their own way to it. You know, you can't, you can't sort of push yourself onto people. But once you become a walking advertisement for better, then people do definitely start gravitating to that. You know, like, um, I think Jackson sees me how consistent I am. Maybe get on the microphone again, Jack. Um, Jackson sees how consistent I am. Very consistent, yep. Yep. And, you know, it's not that you make fun of me. You sometimes, like, make fun of my shorts. <laughs> but, but um, Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think people probably go, oh, oh, he's a bit crazy. But, like, everyone wishes that they could kind of stick to it. It's because people don't really have discipline like you. Yeah. And I feel like people just kind of belittle it yeah they do make it bit. seem like it's nothing yeah but yeah yeah it does and you just got to be okay with that so last thing i want to finish on lou is this should you leave i wouldn't if you like your job and you like your place of work where you are i just put your head down just keep going it, after my second divorce the whole town was talking about it massively and um a lot of adjustment period you know the there was lots of things going on um everyone was just waiting for me to fall on my face but I just stayed steady as, as steady as I could. There was some very wobbly times in there emotionally and things like this and regrouping and, you know, honesty and things like this to myself and people around me. It was just like, yeah, I just, um, you know, when I got remarried, some people didn't come to the wedding because they didn't agree with it and things like this. So, but I knew which direction I had to go and I wouldn't change that or change that because of anyone for anything, because that authenticity of a decision that is the right decision for you may make, you know, you might end up leaving this place, but you'll definitely be attracted to something better. Definitely. Your real friends, your real people are all that matters. And I had some people stick with me right there. I've had one guy, Dino, has been my best man right the way through. Jordan didn't judge me. Trev didn't judge me. It just, we just, marched on and you know everyone did and a few people didn't and it didn't really matter anyway but now i'm at the fittest version of myself the best version of myself the happiest i've ever been the best relationship ever you know my kids are good you know one you know the thing with logan you know had to sort of you know work through that but we all pulled together pretty pretty well and life is powering so lou wake up every day do what feels right to you. Do not compromise for anybody else. Be a really nice person. Work super hard. Increase your targets at work. Work out the system on how to get there. Stay focused. Don't engage with too many people around you if they're critical of you because they'll move out of your way over a period of time. Make consistency and discipline your superpower and life will follow. And whatever happens, be good with it. Whatever changes come, be good with it. And be excited every day and you will be led to the path that lights up for you and shows you where your greatest success is.